Hi, I'm Christian Guzman, and I approve of the Board Shorts and Banter podcast. Good morning, people, and welcome back to the Board Shorts and Banter podcast. My name is Tom Stock, this is Josh Crogan, and we are joined by a very, very special guest today. Everyone, I'd like to reintroduce you to Mr. Dom Kirk. Go over what he's doing right now, his previous season that he's just gone through, and also what is to come for the man in the future. So sit back, relax, grab a Diet Coke, and enjoy. Or maybe a rise and, sh- rise and shine? A rise and shine from Pittsburgh. Rise and grind, bruh. Rise and grind. Let's go. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. John, uh, Dom, jo- John, John. John. I was about to say Dom. Josh yeah. and Dom won then. But Dom, how are we, John? Man? Uh, I'm good. I'm good, fellas. It's uh, it's good to. Um, this is my hat trick on this uh, podcast now. So, like every it time, it's been like it was like the big group of all in first, and then it was me and Aaron, and now it's just me. So, yeah, so uh, there's going to be less people next time. We're going to invite Kaylee on as well, yeah, and then exactly. um, put it back. Amazing. Up. Do you know yeah. why it is? It's, be- it's because uh, whenever someone like comes on the podcast, like fucking, hell, I'm not doing that again. And then we ask everyone like, as a group, like, yeah, maybe next time. Yeah, yeah, I'll catch you next time. It's just whittling down to you're the last, you're the nicest guy, mate. That's why oh, you know, you're the last one now. There we go. I think it'd be pretty cool as well for us to get the exclusive on your season and like you know everything that happened in Dubai because you said that you were going to talk about it on Instagram or like give everyone an update, and we're still waiting, Dom. I know, I know, but it's it's so hard to actually like find the time because like when I was on my way back, I was thinking, yeah, I have loads of time to just like sit down and talk about it. And one, there's like so much to talk about, um, mm. and two, we can actually just find the time to actually sit down and not like bore everyone. So I was like trying to think in my head about how to condense it all. Um, but yeah, now is a perfect opportunity, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to condense it here, mate. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was going to say. Don't condense. Do the yeah. opposite. Expand. Noted. <laughs> All right. I'll use more words. But yes. um, for, for any for anyone that doesn't, because obviously we've got some new listeners now, so for anyone that doesn't know you, Dom, give us like a, a brief introduction to yourself, what you do, etc. Um, so I am a classic physique athlete, um, sponsored by uh, the best clothing brand in the fitness space. All in. Yeah, um, there we go. As, along with uh, your, you fine gentleman. Um, but yeah, I'm based in the Midlands, um, which isn't very exciting because we don't have any gyms around here. So um, yeah, we are looking to, to relocate. Um, That's true. But yeah, I mean, I've been training for. I mean, I've been training for over ten years, but like properly, I would say. Uh, like the last six years like you know once you get a coach and once you start taking things a little bit more seriously um yeah I think that's around about the time I was kind of yeah moving into like proper like bodybuilding um I've competed five times now so previously I had done like one show a year but then the last season I've just done I did three shows so that pushed me up to to five shows so yeah, I feel like I'm still relatively new to competing, but obviously, I guess doing five shows now means I'm not. So yeah, it's, it's a weird one. I enjoy it, um, and yeah, it was a it was a good season. How, how old are you, Dom? I'm thirty now. Thirty, right? Oh, when you get to thirty, you become you become a lot more unimpressive, don't you? Like the only people that are truly impressive are people that are under twenty four. Literally, yeah. No one cares about me anymore. That's it. No, no, no one cares about us, mate. We're washed up. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're has beens. Yeah. To be fair, we've if you're not past our peak, if you're not turning pro now at the age of like in the teens, if you're not in the yeah. teens, you're not impressive. That's it. That's yeah. it. Doesn't matter. Yeah, though. retirement it doesn't matter. Now, so. <laughs> mate, you won't be getting a pro card. You'll be getting a, uh, a bus pass in the post. That's <laughs> yeah, what arrives for you, yeah. mate. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! But no, um, so obviously, uh, you've just come off your well. Is that your your third season now? Then isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I find it hard to call the other two like seasons because it's only like one show. Um, yeah, like both times it was meant to be more shows, but. Um, I wasn't in the right, the right headspace to to push on and do other shows those years. So yeah, this year was like the only time I could properly call it a season. Right. And how did you find going from 
doing one show previously each each season to now doing three did you find it a lot more challenging or it it was tough but i think i kind of made it easier for myself by uh planning them all like quite close together um so the first two shows was only like a week apart um, so literally like two peak weeks back to back. And then for the third one, there was two weeks. Um, I mean, the original plan was to do uh, four shows. It was to do like three shows all back to back weekends. And then, have, hell. and then have like a four week break. Um, and then go into another show in Austria. Um, but Martin kind of like before any of the shows, Martin, um, gave me like a message and he was like, how do you fancy doing a show a bit sooner? Um, and I was at this point, I was meant to be four weeks out from the first one. He was like, it's in two weeks. Um, he was like, you look ready. Like we can jump into it. Um, he was like, I won't peak you as such. We'll just kind of like run you into it. Um, and I was like, well, I trust you. If you think I can go into that show and do well, then like we'll do it. And that's when we did Cardiff and a week later we did the PCA show. And then I was meant to do another PCA show after that one, but then obviously we had the two weeks and then went to Dubai. So, uh, yeah, it was quite a lot of change, quite a lot to take in, but yeah, I, I did enjoy doing the shows that close, but, um, it was tough on the body. I would admit. Yeah. It's, it's one of them in it. You, you have got to find a really nice balance and I'm sure like I'm saying this is a natural, I'm sure it's different gravy when you're playing around with, with anabolics as well, like doing multiple peak weeks as a natural isn't easy. Is it, is it pretty tough on the body? Like, you know, running, but saying that you didn't really do a peak week, did you for the first show? So it would have only really been, I mean, one true peak. Yeah. We still still had things to play with. So obviously I had a weight cap. Um, so we still had to kind of like warm me down a little bit to get under that. Um, so yeah, that was probably like the hardest part of, of all the shows, just kind of making sure I was like on weight every time. Um, cause my body doesn't really like being that light as such. You know what I mean, so yeah, yeah, it, it, it was quite tough to keep putting down. So yeah, we got under it quite comfy for the first one. Obviously PCA doesn't really have a weight cap, but we were still kind of imagining it did just to make sure we kind of, uh, yeah, almost like a little practice, like trial runs. Yeah. We get under it again, and obviously for the third time in Dubai. But yeah, it is it is tough. I mean, I think probably harder than I expected it to be because I just thought oh, I'll be kind of like riding on a high, like into all these shows. But I think one day post show you're still high, but then kind of straight back to work again, and you're right back to where you were, um, like digging again. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's not easy physically. So, right, let's take it back then to maybe even a bit before the first show. What was your, what was the weight cap that you needed to to get down to to be able to compete in Classic? So my weight cap is 88 kilos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's just crazy that you struggled to get down to 88 <laughs> yeah. kilos. Dom, how tall are you? Uh, I'm like 5'8". Right. Right. So 88 kilos at 5'8 is pretty, that's pretty big. Yeah. Like, big. Tom, how much did you weigh this morning? Um, 85.8. Have you, are hey, you at, poorly? What? Why, why have you lost so much weight in a week? I've, lo- I've lost like three and a half kilos in nine days. Wow, stopping <laughs> off. Jesus. We don't hang about here, mate. <laughs> it's, the, it's them anabolics, bro. It's, it's the rise and shine. It is, it is. Yeah, 100%, bro. It's just it's just a water weight. Anyway, this whole off-season has literally just been water weight. That's all it is, you know? Yeah, loads of inflammation from the toe. Yeah. Uh, so 88 kilos, how much did you end up weighing on your weighing for the first show? Um, so we got it down to 86.7. I think I actually stepped on the scales. Um, so yeah, we, we made it like pretty comfortably. I must have, it was tough like, on the day because like we got to Cardiff and like Martin just like told me to like weigh myself like when he arrived um obviously taking scales everywhere so I stepped on the scales this is like three hours before the actual like official weigh-in and I was like 87 point something and he was like right we're not having like any food any water 
um, this morning. So I had to like be fasted for that whole morning. So that that wasn't easy. But um, yeah, we did it in the end. It was a long ass morning as well, weren't it? Because uh, I remember seeing on Instagram you guys heading down at like mm-hmm. the bit earlier than the crack of dawn. What what time <laughs> did you you drive to Cardiff? Well, obviously the, the original plan was to like get an Airbnb and go down the night before because that's when we thought the weigh-in was. But then when we found out that the weigh-in was on the same day and Tanner was on the same day, we were like, well, there's no point going down the night before. So we'll just drive early. Um, so we were up at like 3 a.m. and we left our house at like 4 because um, Cardiff's like quite a journey, obviously. So, uh, yeah, it was a long morning. So like a double espresso down like, a little bit of water and that was it. Um, but yeah, it was an experience for sure for me and Kaylee, I'm sure. Oh yeah. An experience. That's what's one way of putting it. <laughs> um, and, and tell the people, Dom, how did you do mm. at your first show? Okay. So the first one, um, went pretty well, I would say. Um, so I won my open class in classic and then, uh, managed to take home the overall, which is, Obviously, my first Small one. Mash. So, yeah, very good day. Very good day. Yeah, you, you, it were a pretty decent lineup as well. Like it weren't, it weren't a terrible. Got it. Like it was a really good show. So yeah. to win an overall, it's, it's, it's like a nod that you are in the right class. It's a nod that you're doing everything right. Bloody hell, it's, it's a massive achievement. So yeah, congrats, mate. Cause, Thank you very much. Yeah, that, yeah. That was good very, very proud of you. Really good athletes yep. there that day. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then, and then after that, it was obviously <laughs> straight back into a peak week for yeah. a very different experience from what I can gather the week after. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what show was it? It was PCA Coventry or PCA Mercy, I think they called it. Oh um, yeah, but yeah, and you've you've never done a PCA show, have you? No, no, that was my first no. one. I get a feeling that you're not going to do one again either. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Martin will let me now. Um, as obviously, he wasn't as pleased, but yeah. Right. Go on. Tell the people what happened. Obviously, we know that you're classic. You you look classic. You just won a classic overall. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was really confusing, but basically, so I entered. Um, oh, where's, where's Josh gone? There he is. Hello. Hi. What happened then, Krogan? Um Did it refresh? Think... No, no. We just kind of like just said reconnecting and then Okay. Here we are. Go on, carry on. Should be fine. Um so yeah, went into um classic short, because that's obviously the division that I fit into. Um not even thinking about whether I actually fit their criteria or not, as Tom just said, like I if you're coming off the back of a, a classic overall, then yeah, why wouldn't you enter classic? So bearing in mind, there's no weight cap for this one. Um, so we got on stage, they did like a, a full round with us. So all the quarter turns, like every like mandatory shot. Um, they then said on the mic that like my number um, has been moved. And I was like looking around thinking like what's, what's going on? Like this, this doesn't happen. Um, no. So then I kind of come off stage, went backstage. I was looking around for like members of staff to, for someone to give me like some, some clarity. Uh, and they said, basically you're too muscular for this category. Um, they're going to move you into bodybuilding. And obviously at that point, like my head kind of went as like, I'm not a like bodybuilder. Obviously we were all bodybuilders, but I'm not, like an open class bodybuilder. Um, and I'd seen some of those guys already. Um, and they were big dudes. Like I knew I was going to be the, one of the swanest in the lineup. Um, yeah. So obviously my head went like Kaylee met me backstage and she had to kind of like calm me down a little bit. Um, at this point, Martin was in LA. So the time difference was way off. Um, but like fair play to him because he was up. Um, he was like trying to keep in touch with me and tell me what to do. Um, as you guys know, everything you do is kind of like dependent on what time you're on stage. So you kind yeah. of like peak for that time. So I'd done everything for classic and I was like, well, what do I do now? Because I'm going to have to wait another half an hour, 45 minutes um, to get back on stage. So 
yeah, stress level was a lot. Cortisol like was through the roof, so not the ideal situation. Um, but ended up doing okay in bodybuilding. So yeah, it was just such a weird day. So weird, so it's, weird. But uh, you know, gosh. like them saying that you're too muscular or too big. If I've I've seen like a few snapshots of the lineup that you were in, you do stand out like a sore thumb. Like you are so much bigger than everyone else, but it doesn't mean to say that you aren't classic. Yeah, that 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 was the weird thing for me. It's like, well, if there's no weight cap, like how how can I be too big? Because if there were say, I don't know, two or three other guys that were my size, then I, they wouldn't have moved us, would they? So, yeah, no. it's, it's just a weird one. It's For me, it's like, all right, so yeah, PCA, obviously not as big or competitive. Well, you say that as a federation of, say, like two bros, right? However, if they want to, if they do want to elevate their classic physique competitors, why aren't they awarding maybe someone that is of a higher caliber classic physique? It's clear to see that you are a classic physique. So if they've got someone in a classic physique class at their show and you stick out like a sore thumb, that is what it is. It doesn't mean that you're an open bodybuilder. It's just obviously the level of their competition. You're clearly just above it. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. I mean, it, it was strange. Like, like, like I said, there was, there was a lot of good guys in that class. Um, and I did not want to like disrespect them at all. Uh, but all I was saying like, on my stories when I was going through this was just that I was, I was almost penalized because I was, bigger than everyone else like and i don't i don't understand how, how that works in bodybuilding but yeah just just one of those things like it was still a good day um i'll probably never get the chance to compete in open bodybuilding again so i was like you know what <laughs> yeah just, just wrong with it like it's a one-time thing so yeah yeah experience. so <laughs> you took what was it second in that show second, yeah yeah and then you the guy didn't, you didn't even out you didn't look out of place in that open one as well yeah you didn't Thank you. I appreciate that. I, th I thought yeah, you looked place, but... unreal. Hang on, Dom. Hang on, Dom. So you're, you're struggling to make weight for classic. You're not looking out of place in open. Maybe you're not classic. Yeah, that's, it. <laughs> not, so that's it. Yeah, into off season now. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, road to road to open, bro. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So then obviously Crazy. after after the the PCA drama, which was definitely a lot of drama, what came what came after them? Um so we had like um a week where it was a little bit like a clearance week. So um I had a little bit of time like after the show to kind of relax. Um and then the next day was a little bit more chill again. Like I was able to have like a meal in the evening with Kaylee. Um and then we knew it was kind of like pedal to the metal a little bit um, to to get ready for Dubai. As it was only a week, pretty much a week later, I was going to be traveling out there. Um, so it was like my last week left at home. So with all my like familiar surroundings. Um, so yeah, so cardio went back in at that point. Um, carbs came out. Like I was already like pretty much in condition, but we knew that the standard out in Dubai, I was going to have to like bring a new level. So yeah, yeah, it, it was quite a tough week. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, as, as you guys know, like at that point in prep, like your, your training sessions are, are pretty trash. Um, you're literally just going in the gym and kind of just moving a little bit of weight. You can't really feel anything. Um, so that's kind of the point I was at. Um, and then on the Monday after that, is when we were flying out. So yeah, I was just kind of like making the most of my last week at home. Um, obviously spending time getting things together, everything that I'm going to need to take away with me um, and make sure I had all like the correct documents and all that jazz to make sure like nothing went wrong whilst I was out there. But yeah, um, I was quite nervous about competing abroad as I've never done it before. As I, you know, I find packing and going through airports quite stressful at the best of times, but let alone when you're about to do a show out there. It was, yeah, it, it was tough. Um, but yeah, that, that last week at home was, was um, probably the hardest week I've had on prep. Yeah. Mm. Do you know with like the preparation for Dubai, who, who was the, uh, the coordinator and instigator? Was it you or, or Kaylee? 
it, pretty much Kaylee, to be fair. I mean, <laughs> she, she's not like the best at dealing with like airports, but she knew that she had to step up as I was like, like I, I yeah, I'm just not with it at the minute, so it's over to you. <laughs> what was your um what was your setup in terms of like cardio, your food and whatnot going into like the last few weeks, or especially between the PCA and the Dubai Dubai show? Because obviously you said you had to bring in a little bit more condition. So what how hard did you actually push it? Um, so obviously there was, there was no carbs. I mean, I, I spent like long periods of this whole prep, um, on no carbs. I think, um, when I last seen you, Tom, at one of the all in shoots, um, yeah. like my weight had kind of like stalled. Um, yeah. so it's pretty much like from that point, we kind of pulled carbs out as I was like stuck at, um, it was like 96 or 97 and it just wouldn't budge. Um, you know, my weight just wouldn't come down. I was, I was looking a little bit leaner, like week on week, but my weight wouldn't budge. Um, and obviously time was getting less and less. So you kind of pull carbs out from there. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we, we were, we were pretty much like baseline for, for quite a lot of this prep and calorie wise, I, I tend like not to look at it too much, but I think, um, it was around like 1800 um maybe a little bit lower at a point so i think it did go down to like 1500 um um just to make sure for a guy guy that's like you know struggling to get down to 80 what was it 80 you know 87 yeah madness um and then cardio wise like for the majority of the prep it was um step mill and that kind of like crept up to an hour that was like the most it got um but I would and I tend to like split that up. Like I'll do like 40 minutes in the morning and I'll do like 20 minutes um, in the evening. Um, we've got like a bike at home. So I do like some of it on that. Um, but like, towards the end, um, it kind of built back up to an hour. But I did the whole of that in the morning on the bike. Um, and it's like in the evenings, I just had no energy left. So um, yeah, that was pretty much the setup up until... I think the day we were flying um, was like my last cardio session. Um, so we ran it for like quite a long time. So, so you, what was you going to say, Josh? Sorry. Um, what, do you know, so the show was, was it a Saturday or was it a Friday? The Dubai one? Yeah. A uh, Saturday. Saturday. So how many days before the show did you head out to Dubai? So we flew on Monday night. Uh, like UK time, like ten, uh, half ten UK time, and then we ended up getting there at like half. It was like half eight uh, in the morning, Dubai time. Um, yeah. So like flew like through the night. We worked out that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Um, as a, if I could like try and get some sleep on the plane, um, and then we were there for like the start of the day um, on the Tuesday. So technically, like from the Tuesday, we were there. Yeah. So that's like the perfect period of time. You can like acclimatize, set up base, and then, you know, like you get a few decent sessions in in Dubai and then actually do your, pretty much your full peak, can't you, whilst, whilst you're there. Yeah. Um, did, you, did, you get to, did you get to enjoy Dubai much? Or was it all <laughs> like, you know, just, just eating food and training? It, it was so frustrating. Like, I think I spoke a little bit on my story about it, but it was so weird that like when I got there, Obviously, your body just feels like, oh, I'm on holiday now. This is great. But then you have to remember, I'm still at work to do. Like, this isn't a holiday. Um, and, like, initially, because I felt so rough, I didn't sleep much on the plane, um, even though like, I, I tried my best. Like, they were serving food and stuff. So I wasn't allowed any, like, food or water um, through, like, a seven-hour flight, which was tough. Um, they were serving food, and that kept, like, waking me up, like, the smell of it. Um so yeah, no sleep was on the plane. So when I got there, even, even though even though the food on an aeroplane is horrific, <laughs> you were that hungry. Yeah, that oh. plane, I would have eaten anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> You've eaten the seat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I felt rough when I got there, and I was thinking, like, what have I done? I've dragged like my family out of here. Um, like, I felt like I was way out of my depth. Um, yeah, it was such a horrible feeling, but. Uh, once we got to the gym and like and trained a little bit, like I felt better and it was so hot. Um, but in terms of like enjoy Dubai, uh, we we tried our best. I mean, we went to the mall um, and kind of wandered around there like 
for one of the days. But it's so hot and humid, like you can't really stay out in the sun too long. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it was difficult being in such a cool place and not being able to like experience it properly. Uh, so we are going to have to like go back at some point, but yeah, it, it was tough not being able to do like everything you would do on a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, any, what any more questions, Tom? I, I obviously we've not spoke about the show at all yet. No, no, I, we're going to, we're going to lead on to that. But so with Dubai as well, I've heard many different opinions. Mm. What was your initial impressions of it when you got there? Uh, it was hot. <laughs> it was the first one. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's quite pretentious um, mm. in certain places. Um, yeah, I mean, we probably didn't see uh, a lot of it. As If you imagine it's like um, Birmingham and you've got like the NEC. So you're kind of like out of it a little bit because yeah. that's, that's where we had to stay. It was like in the NEC version. Got you. Um, okay. Right. We were kind of staying like out of like the, the thick of the, the city. So, um, but yeah, yeah. Some parts were pretty pretentious. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I've heard it like, um, it feels like a little bit like synthetic or mm. there's not much like culture there. I don't know. I, I want to go to Dubai. I want to experience it for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I've had a lot of different opinions from, uh, you know, from people that have been there or got moved over there to like, you know, set up their new life and then they end up back in the UK, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, it does yeah. feel like the city doesn't have like, you know, you can almost sense like a soul in the city. Um, yeah, yeah. The yeah, soul, it, yeah. It, it is pretty soulless. So there's like there's so many new buildings and you know they're all empty, which is, yeah, it's, it's quite weird. Um, but yeah, very cool at the same time. 100%. Yeah, 100%. So um, I, was, I was just thinking as well then, like, Holiday vibes, Krog, and that would have been perfect for you, mate, for your show, yeah, wouldn't it? You'd I be know. Kicking it back, drinking a beer, you know, chilling yeah. out, drying yeah. out in the in the sun. <laughs> Do you know, uh, Anna, Annabella joked the other day when we when we went out to Houston um, for summer shredding. I f- I forgot, but I, I was uh, I was drinking champagne at six in the morning in the airport. So I was just so like, oh, I'm on holiday, I'm chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday how vibes. Long, how, did, how, did, how long did you give it, Josh? When we... Carry on, Dom. Go on, Dom. How did you find so far for a show? Um, I've, I did it. I did it in twenty twenty one for competing in Vegas, and I th- I thought it was all right. I, I I almost like I liked the the build up of it. Like, oh, I'm actually having to travel across the world to compete. Like, they were almost like a little bit of a like, yeah. Fuck yeah. So I, I weren't, I, I didn't kind of like deep it too much and think, oh, I've got to go X amount of hours without having like a proper meal. It was just all like, I think it was just very much filled with adrenaline the entire, every time that I've traveled. Um, I think it's easier to travel further than it is to do like a short haul flight. Cause you know, like say with Germany, it was two hours in an airport, two hours flying, and then maybe an hour and a half, two hours uh, messing around at the other side. Whereas when you sat on a plane, you can take a meal on there. You know exactly how long you're going to be on there, and you can kind of like split things up, you know, appropriately. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought it was fine. But I did the opposite of you as well. So like how you didn't drink fluid for the for the entire flight. I did the opposite. So it was an, a, a liter of water every hour and then every two hours, a cup of coffee. Right. Okay. So rather than ending up dehydrated, you end up hy- hypohydrated or hyperhydrated where your body's just expelling fluid at like a ridiculous rate. So it was like every 20 minutes I was going to the toilet, which, which, which was, which was fine. Um, cause then when we got to the other side, I didn't have any kind of water retention in my legs or anything. Um, I just, yeah, I just, I just constantly, constantly went to the toilet. Mm. Yeah. Where, where did you pick that one up from Josh? Did you figure that out yourself or did you get told that or, um, AJ kind of suggested it. It was like, rather than like dehydrating yourself or, you know, even falling asleep on the plane, try and stay awake, get up and move as much as you can. Uh, I didn't. I didn't necessarily need to make an effort to get up and move because whenever I was going to the toilet or walking, you know, half the length of of the plane, 
Um, but yeah, it's I did it once, it worked beautifully, and then I've just done it every single time. Whenever I've had a client travel to compete, I've I've done the same kind of thing with them. So in twenty twenty two, I'd Phil come over from Australia and he did the exact same. So bearing in mind like a twenty four hour flight, that's like Jesus. twenty odd liters of water in one in one day. And he did it, he did it. He did it like a pro, uh, and then he competed five days later and looked mint. So as in Natty, I think that is the the smarter way of going about it. Mm. I feel like uh, water retention from flights affects people differently anyway. Like some people like get it really bad. Some people don't. It's just all very like individual, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Last last year, um, so obviously did multiple shows abroad. And then at Christmas, we went on holiday to Mauritius. And I didn't, I didn't obviously... I didn't do the water retention protocol for the flight to Mauritius because I weren't competing in the Mauritius Classic. And the water retention was insane. Like, my legs were just so puffy. And it kind of, like, solidified my um, approach when it comes to travelling abroad for shows. So, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. Like, obviously, for me, going out there, not having anything, um, I actually got drier. So when I took pictures on arrival as soon as we got into our place i was so like dry um which yeah it, it was it was quite good to see but then obviously on the way home once i'd like rehydrate a little bit like i had a little bit of food like my feet and ankles were like so <laughs> swollen yeah it, it, it was horrible like I, I could barely get my shoes back on uh, once we landed but yeah like you said <laughs> it's it's quite strange how everyone like feels it differently uh, depending on like where what state your body's in yeah mm. yeah um did, did you enjoy competing abroad like as an overall thing are you going to try and like do that again in the future or was it like a i've done it once it's ticked off um yeah i did enjoy it um i did enjoy it i mean i think i would like to try next like a, a shorter haul flight um because obviously there's a lot of like pro qualifiers in europe um that would be quite easy to get to um but yeah i think the one thing i didn't expect is like how expensive it, it would be i mean i didn't like pick a cheap one to do obviously dubai is, is going to be quite expensive but um yeah that that was a lot um but yeah in terms of like an experience i did um enjoy it the only issue i kind of ran into um was like the language barrier when i was trying to like register ah. Um, as they didn't, I don't think they expected like many UK athletes to, to be over there. So there was a lot of like Arabic speaking athletes, um, and they didn't really accommodate for, for us, us UK boys, but yeah, I, I would definitely do it again for sure. Right. So let's get on to it then. The actual yeah. show. So it was the it was the amateur pro qualifier for the Dubai Pro Show, which is I am led to believe it's the biggest prize money or second biggest prize money that's not the Olympia mm. of any bodybuilding show in the world. Correct. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, how many guys did? In fact, do you want to just tell us how the show was run? Uh, yeah. So. Well, first of all, there was meant to be two pro qualifiers. Um, there was meant to be one for like the Gulf residents. So any countries that are in like the Gulf state, so like Saudi, uh, Qatar, like any, any of those countries, Dubai, um, any residents from there, they had their own separate pro qualifier. And then there was like a rest of the world one. So the rest of the world one was first. But then when we got there, we were told that the residents could do both if they want to um oh so yeah it, it meant that oh that is stupid it, it meant that like obviously my class was stacked as the, the rest of the world one was first um and then the golf one was the next day um so basically they had like two chances to, to try and get a pro card um but i mean weighing and registering was like chaos um there was even like two guys that nearly had a fight with each other. They had to be like <laughs> separated. It, it it was like mayhem. And I, was, <laughs> I was trying to register for like three hours, I think. Bearing in mind, I've not had any food because I need to weigh in. Um, 
so yeah, there, there was a lot of guys all in the same position. Um, so once that bit was done, um, a lot of like stress dropped off and we were good. But in terms of like actually like the show day, um, it was actually like really, really well run. Um, so I got tannin on the day, which I prefer is you don't have to do that whole like the night before thing and then try and sleep and try and like, not touch anything and sleep on like black bed sheets. Um, so that was all done on the day. Um, it was a long day as they didn't start until like 1 p.m. Um, and then I was probably on at about five, which is the latest I've ever competed, um, which meant it's the most food I've ever had, like pre-stage. Um, so yeah, it, it was a whole new experience. But we were, once like the categories got going, um, they were pretty like swift with it. The only um, downside is that we didn't get to do any routines. We didn't get to do like any like 30 second, like individual, like freestyle. It was actually just, they, they brought us on in like your group. You do like a round of poses, you go off again. And then obviously you come back for like the call outs. Um, they do the call outs and then you just hope that you're in the top five. And then if you're in the top five, you come back on and you get your award. So yeah. Mad. It, that's terms, that's like, mad. Yeah. It, it wasn't great because you spend so much money on it. You want a little bit more stage time, but they yeah. just didn't give it to you because it had so much to get through. So yeah, that was a downside. Yeah. How many how many guys were there in your class then? I don't know exactly, but there was like over thirty guys. <laughs> yeah, that's like the biggest class I've ever heard of. Yeah, it, genuinely, it, it, it was silly, mate. I mean, it, you know when you know when you're backstage, and obviously like they they call your category to like get ready to go on, and. Like, I don't want to sound horrible, but most of the time, like, you look around and think, okay, there's a couple of guys in my category that I kind of feel like I've got beat. Um, like, I, I can beat them. Like, I'm, I'm pretty confident yeah. I can beat them. Um, in this case, like, with all 30 guys, I was looking around thinking, everyone's in condition and everyone's got muscle. I was thinking, like, this is going to be so hard to get noticed up there. Um, but, yeah, it, it's very, very daunting when you've got all these guys around you all in the same category because you just think, like, I don't know what's going to happen out there. After you've just been told you're not classic as well. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Like, a few weeks one before. of the biggest classic stages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sound. You know? <laughs> How stupid. So did, oh, you, did, did, did you feel, did, did, did the off the fallout of the PCA show, did you have any less confidence going into this one? You know, it was obviously a different federation, et cetera, et cetera, yada, yada, mm. whatever. But did you have any less confidence than before? I think... I almost had more confidence because Good. whenever, like in the build up to going to Dubai, like once we'd chosen that show, all I was hearing from people is, oh, there's going to be like big guys out there. Like, oh, those guys are going to be massive. So once I kind of got the confirmation from PCA, say that um, I was too big for their classic category, I was thinking, okay, well, how much bigger than me are they going to be? Like, I'm, I don't feel like I'm going to be outsized. Um, so that almost gave me like more confidence because I think I always have this fear that I'm going to look too small. Um, I think that's just from being like the skinny kid when I was younger. Um, I kind of still have that like mentality. Um, so that kind of gave me the confidence to know that, all right, whatever happens, I'm not going to be the smallest in my category. If anything, I'm going to be the, the, the top end. Um, so that kind of helped in a way um and it, it it proved to be the case i mean the top five were all kind of like the same size um but yeah i, I don't think it did it, my confidence any harm good yeah, good good that's that that in my eyes is what a champion's mindset is it's like being able to reframe something that like other people would see as a negative you're able to like literally switch it and use it as a all right this is a good thing because something else is like you know you've got a, another show coming up that's going to be even more competitive and yeah you've just obviously enhanced your your mindset from there um so we know the result yeah it was a good result yeah very good result out of the 30 plus people where did you place mr dom kirby so i managed to pick up a third place um come on i know yeah it's 
it's strange because obviously we didn't go there for third, but given the circumstance, I was like, yeah, um, I'll, I'll take that and um, I'll move on. But yeah, I was I was pretty happy with that. Mate, if you compared the, your, the top five in your class to, you know, people that have won the pro cards in Europe or like even in America, like, in fact, America's just a bit of a joke, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> you, you only have to come second in your class to win your bloody pro card there. Um you would you will be taking away a pro card in ninety percent of pro qualifiers in Europe, in my opinion. Yeah, thank you. It, it, it was just it was the standard was so good. Did the guy that won your class did he go on to win his pro card or he did, yeah. Oh yeah. We got the card. So, there we go. Yeah. It it was annoying because I was I was in the lineup, I was in second place for most of it. And then they they switched me out at the end. Um, we weren't at the time. We weren't sure whether I was third and moving into second or vice versa. Um, but yeah, the guy in the middle, like he didn't get moved, and and he won the card. So yeah, fair play to him. He, he looked good. Um, he looked very very good. So he he was a worthy winner. Um, so yeah. Where where was he from, Dom? He's from Dubai. Oh, what a joke! Yeah. Oh. <laughs> The lake's just okay. like two bros. It's a fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. At did least the, you can did, say that. Did the did the pro card winner from that show get to go compete in the pro show as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they got. I don't think he did, uh, but they they were given the option. Yeah. If you if you would have won your pro card, would you have done the pro show? It's funny. Martin asked me that um, like the day before because I was talking about like plans post show. And he was like, bro, like, if you win the card, like, there is the pro show the next day. Um, And I'm not sure, because it's easy to say, no, I wouldn't now. But in that situation, like, you might just think, you know what, I'll I'll give it a go. Um, But, like, in my mind, I was like, the amateur cap is a lot lower than the pro cap. So I would be like at my amateur weight and these guys would be like way up here, which then would yeah. mean I'd be one of the smallest in the in the category. But I guess it's not really about that. It's just like the experience, isn't it? So yeah, yeah I don't know. Maybe like adrenaline would just take me through it and I'd, I'd want to hop on stage next to your Brions and all these guys. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that's what Eagles did when he won his pro card in uh, Alicante. He yeah. like came off stage and they were like, oh, you entering the pro show? And he was like, oh, fuck yeah, sign me up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you do it, don't you, for the experience. Like, I, if I if I won a pro card and it was like, oh yeah, Josh, you can go and stand next to Ryan Terry, uh, Erin Banks and Brandon Hendrickson. I'm, I'd be like, yeah, sweet. I'm going to get smoked. I don't care. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah. Literally, is that, what what is the what is the difference in the in the cap between the amateur and the pro now in the IFPB? Well, I think for mine, for example, it would be obviously eighty eight, and I'd be going up to like ninety two, ninety three. I think that's a lot. Yeah, it's 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 quite a big jump. I don't 10 know pounds, why, ten pounds of extra lean mass you could have. Mm. Oh my god, Jesus! Yeah, you wouldn't need to cut out carbs, mate. You could keep yeah, carbs in. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's why we're not really like pushing um up now we're kind of like keeping everything conservative because i can't i don't really have much room uh yeah be careful but uh yeah that's why i definitely need that pro card i need a higher weight cap but yeah well right so plans for the future then so obviously you're not you're not doing any more shows this year when do you think you'll be stepping on stage again um i would like to say next year don't know when, um, but yeah, I don't. I don't want to leave it too long, um, as you know. I, I like you said. I feel like the pro card is just around the corner. Um, if I can kind of nail the look again, yeah. Um, but there are a few things like on the personal side that I want to kind of put in place uh, for myself and for Katie that I know needs to get done first. Um, like I want to focus on like my business side of things, and like I said earlier in the podcast, like, I want to we want to relocate. Like I want to be doing a prep out of um, a different environment next time. So where? <laughs> no, no, I mean when we when we got back from Dubai, Katie was almost like immediately looking at jobs in Dubai. So mad, <laughs> oh, but 
I think that would be kind of like uh, more long term. I think for now we do want to move up north somewhere. Um, yeah, it'll be close to you boys. I don't know where up north, but yeah, definitely up north. <clears throat> Rotherham's lovely. Rotherham is just such a lovely town. Yeah, I've heard it's like the mm. Barcelona of, of the UK. Oh, mate. Yeah, it's it's just beautiful. <laughs> I don't know if I mentioned it on the podcast like either last episode or a couple of episodes ago, but there was a there was an Italian guy staying in, in Rotherham training at Ultraflex for a week. And he was like, There is there is nothing in, in Rotherham. I was like, well, there's Ultraflex. He went, Yes, yes, there is a gym. <laughs> but then there is nothing. I was like, Yeah, he went, no restaurants. I was like, no restaurants. There's nothing at all. Rotherham is terrible. That's why, it breeds, that's why it breeds good bodybuilders, though, because there's nothing, nothing else to do but lift. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It? No distractions. You know? the, the only thing that they sell is chicken and rice and yeah. oats. So, and perfect, eggs from Heron Foods. Town. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to my boys <laughs> over at Heron Foods. <laughs> Half a dozen. Are you, are you in Sheffield or are you in Rotherham? I'm in. I am in Sheffield. I I I I was born and raised in Rotherham, and then as soon as I could afford to, I uh, I emigrated to to Sheffield. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Sheffield's sweet. Sheffield is really nice. Like you know, you can, there's loads of like green areas. Sheffield is actually the greenest city in the UK. So it's got like the most trees and most grassed areas. So it is it is a nice place to live. Rotherham mm. is really not. Problem no. is shit. Um, Dom, have you checked out many of the gyms up north? Um, yeah, been to a few. Uh, we really like been to EP. Yeah, been to EP, uh, which is a really cool gym. Been to FLF. Um, be, yeah, sweet. What did you think of FLF? Yeah, it was nice. Like, I did like it. Um, it feels very um, like professional in there. You don't get anyone in there that's like messing around. Everyone's there to work. Yeah. Um, I could kind of got that vibe there because it's so expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that anyone that, that's in there is there for a good reason. So, yeah, I do like yeah. it. There. And obviously, being under the archway is pretty sick as well. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we've been there. Um, been to like a few of the Ultraflex gyms, uh, like Normanton. Obviously, been to Rotherham. Um, although, I think Normanton is probably our favorite. Um, Oof. We actually really like Wakefield because. I was going to say, if you like Normanton, Wakefield is so cheap. <laughs> you could buy like a mansion for like two hundred grand. <laughs> it's, it's cheap. We have looked on that like there for um for places to to be. So yeah, I mean, watch this space. We could end up in Wakefield. Who knows? That'd be that'd be class. interesting. Hey, um, have, have you seen where the two bros British finals are this year? No. Well, the, the JP one. Yeah. No, where is it? Rotherham. <laughs> <laughs> it's in this bloody, it's in a place called Magna, which used to be a steelworks and is now like a kid's like learning centre almost. And they have like, they have a reasonably sized, sized function room. So I'm imagining that it's, it's going to be in there. But that is a very, very unique place to host a bodybuilding show. Rotherham, let's have a look. Magna. What's it called? Search Mag- Magna. M A G N A. It's about it's about five minutes from Meadowall. Magna, Magna Science Adventure Center. That's the one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is that what we is that what we drove by? Uh, I think we have driven by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah, would have. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Got you. Interesting. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. Good old. Uh, good old Ian from Two Bros finding the best venues. So. Dom then, mate. <clears throat> Obviously, season's wrapped up for now. Based off of the feedback from... What what feedback did you get, if any, from this season? Um, I mean, the only official feedback I got was from the first two shows. Um, so the first one was there was a little bit of room to get some more condition. I mean, that, that was for the first show individually. I mean, we got that more condition like, as we went on, but yeah. Um, room for more condition and I could be fuller um, so yeah to like pull me down maybe like another kilo or two and then like properly like fill me up yeah um, that was the one for the first one um, for the second one 
it was I could do with like a thick too pack. big. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just too big. Yeah, yeah, come down in size. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a, a thicker back, which that feedback was for open bodybuilding. So yeah, I had to kind of think with a pinch of salt. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's one of them in it. Like I always say to people, don't don't rely on feedback too much because like your first show, your feedback, you could be fuller, you could be leaner. Shock, horror, you didn't really do a peak week. It's your first show of the season. Yeah, you're not going to be a hundred percent. Second yeah. show, bigger back. Yes, and that's because you've compared Dom to open bodybuilders. Yeah. So what 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 can you what can you take away from there? It's it's crazy. Yeah. Um, what what Martin said is like your your areas that you need to bring up or areas that you need to change? So I think we, we both know that like my midsection can definitely be like tighter because I've been like focusing on pulling vacuums in so many of my shots. I've kind of neglected like training my abs properly. Um, so I think we know now that I need to have like those properly like chiseled abs. So I need to start training them a bit more. Um, as I, I must admit, I would get kind of like lazy in off season and not properly like um, do it as often as I said I would. So it's one of the areas that like everyone tends to neglect. But if you put the work in, the effort in, like it does show on stage. Um, so definitely, you know, yeah. So I, I need better abs. Um, I do need a bigger back as well. I know, like they were comparing it to open bodybuilders, but I know for me, I would like a, like slightly thicker lower back. So I don't do many like hip hinges. Um, so I'm going to start doing that a bit more. Um, it's going to like thicken up that area, but those are the two main, main areas that we both know that I have to bring up. Yeah. Easy. Easy. You'll do that in no time. Let's hope so. And, uh, are you going to continue to work with Martin through your off season or are you the type of person that would, uh, would rather work with a coach just for a prep? Um, then no, no, I'll still be with Martin. Like I need that, um, accountability. Uh, like more than anything, just to kind of like keep me like moving through the gears. Um, and yeah, there's there's no one better for me than to t- tell me that than mine. So um, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll still be with him for sure. Good stuff. And we're on the subject of Martin, Martin's obviously one of the boys now. He's part of the All In Bodybuilding clan. Um, what's what's it been like? Like I know we've spoke about it, and you you love Martin because he's amazing. Um, What's been the biggest thing that Martin's done for you this prep that like you've not had previously with other coaches? Um, it's hard to like pinpoint, but I think because he's so calm um, and like nothing, nothing stresses him. So if nothing stresses him, nothing's going to stress me um, as an athlete. Um, like during the phase when my weight wasn't budging. <laughs> And obviously, like weeks were going by, and we're getting closer and closer to the show. Um, like he wasn't stressed at all. Um, which, like previously, I'd be like losing my mind at that point, thinking I'm not going to be ready. Like I'm not going to reach this weight cap. But he was just calm. Like he just altered a few things, and obviously, my weight just started to like plummet. Um, so there's that, and also just like the knowledge side of things that he's got is just like out of this world. Like. He can make like the smallest changes, even though he hasn't worked with me for that long. It's almost like he knows my body inside out, um, which was yeah, it was quite fascinating. Obviously, I, I was quite learning quite a lot um, as a coach, like myself, just like picking up things from him. Um, and yeah, it, it was just like a really, um, it was quite a chilled prep compared to some others in the past. Um, so yeah, and obviously on a show day. He does like everything he can to take any stress like away from me. Um, like he's running around doing this, that, and the other, make sure I've got enough of this, enough of that. Um, so yeah, yeah, he basically does everything that you'd want um, a coach to do. Did he? Uh, awesome. Did he go to Dubai with you? He did. Yeah, mate, what a life! Is in LA one week, <laughs> Dubai the next. <laughs> he literally, what a, what a bloke. Just, he's been in uh, Dallas like the last couple of days, so I think he's back home now. But yeah, he's literally all over the place. That's oh crazy. My God, that's see, that is that's the levels that we're wanting to reach. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've I've watched Martin as well because um, he's from Plymouth, mm. where I'm from. He's yeah. a local boy to me, and um, obviously I used to see him in Bodyward quite a lot. And you know, I've seen him 
you know, for years, like building up his coaching and whatnot. And what, is, what he's achieved now is so, so good to see. And it's definitely uh, well earned as well. So yeah. fair play to you, Martin. Hats off to you, brother. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get him on the podcast at some point. I, 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 it's just a bit scary, isn't it? Asking like, you know, <laughs> a big name in the industry. Hi, Martin, do you want to come on the board? Do some banter podcast? Change your name and I'll be on it. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Um, any other? I've I've got a couple of questions from Instagram. If uh, if you care to answer them, there's not many, and one of them is from Ian Talbot Valve. Of course, amazing. Oh my god, I, Ian's actually gone a bit personal, though. We'll save we'll save that one. Uh, <laughs> Indio Indio dot wit. We had we. That's the one that uh, I showed you the photo of Tom uh, when we were on the podcast with Mo. He has asked. Okay. Corpus or Ultraflex Rotherham? Only one right answer. Corpus, obviously. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Indio, mate. That's why he's wanting to move because Corpus is so good. <laughs> um, sani 58 has asked, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given, Dom? Oof. It's a deep one. It's a deep form. Um, so this doesn't even have to be like bodybuilding. It's just going to be anything. Yeah, anything, mate. Best piece of advice ever. Don't eat yellow snow. That's that's always a good piece <laughs> yeah, of advice. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> wow, that's, that is tough. Um, What's I the guess, best piece of advice you could get? Oh, go on. Have you got one? I, well, I guess if I am like keeping it like within bodybuilding it is um don't just focus on like the training side of things it's kind of get your diet right um as well as that's where i can make the biggest changes i remember like someone telling me that when i was just starting out is that you're gonna have to like start eating a bit more if you actually want to grow um as i thought just training would be enough so yeah like not neglecting the food side of things would probably be like the best advice i was probably ever given that's where like progress was was being made um, yeah but yeah that, that's the only one i could think of no it's good it's good it, it's, it then kind of answers the next question as well what do what what do most people overlook when bodybuilding is it training diet programming what is it ah, well, there you go so yeah i would say the food side of things um 100 you, you can almost get in shape just with food alone um well i think if you're just training and like your your food's awful then you're never really going to get anywhere. So, yeah, the diet side. Yeah, I would agree. Like, we've spoke about it previously on the podcast. I have eaten some shit in my life. Uh, I have I have had cal- I've had protein shakes that, you know, are near 2,000 calories. Uh, uh, when Dom, you start have you, have increasing... You seen, have, hang on, Dom, have you seen his story highlights on Josh on Krogan's Instagram? No, are they bad? Are they still there, Josh? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's still there. They're, I think I'm going to get rid of all my other story highlights and just have that one. It's called right. Get Fat. Tom, after this podcast, go on Josh's Instagram, scroll uh-huh. to his uh, story highlights and just go over all of the Get Fat ones. Okay. <laughs> and I just want to say that I drank every single one of these <laughs> over okay. a very short period of time. Yeah, so bad. All right, I can't wait. Yeah, I would say like when you start increasing the quality of your food, the quality of your physique tends to uh, follow suit as well. So try not to, yeah, try 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 and level up your your nutrition, and your physique will level up as well. What are you smiling at, Agreed. Tom? I was, I just I was just looking at the stories then, bro. They're great. Yeah, two thousand calories in one shake. <laughs> I must have oh, used to have those, um, you know, the rich piano, uh, like mutant mass. Um, yeah. Trainers. Oh, like the world's. Was it, they were like four scoops that you had to put yeah, in. It was ridiculous, yeah. wasn't it? It took about half the shaker, yeah, just for the power. <laughs> oh, yeah. I used to have one that was like a an Aldi or like a cheap version of it called Mammoth Mass. And <laughs> I remember that. And it was it was dense. But I tell you what, it was beautiful. It was the nicest shake that I've ever had in my life. And then the gym that I was training at stopped selling it. Um, so if anyone knows where you can get hold of some mammoth mass, not not for bodybuilding purposes, I just want to try it again. I just missed the the nostalgic taste. We'll, uh, um, we'll get this up to stock it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, last question from Mr. Ian Talbot-Balf. 
Would you say you're an approachable person? Because in Corpus, you look like you're always pissed. <laughs> yeah, I, I have like a training kind of aura around me. When I'm, in, when I'm training or in the gym, I don't really like to chat. I like, I like, I'm there to work. Like if you want to chat to me like four or after, then, then that's cool. But I literally have that hour and a half, two hours to, to get in and get the job done. Um, and the worst part of training for me is if I ever like lose a pump, like that feeling is like horrible. Like I'm trying to like get it back again. So I know if I spend too much time like chatting to anyone and that pump starts to fade, yeah, it's, it's not, that's it. not a good session for me. So yeah, I probably don't mean to look like pissed off, but um, I am still approachable. Like I'm not going to like, scream at you if you try and talk to me like don't get me wrong but <laughs> i'm losing my pump peace <laughs> off ian <laughs> but um no, do- yeah i was about to say dom is dom is the the calmest nicest person you will ever meet most yeah. humble guy ever it's just even when i like to train i like to just switch on i don't like to just have general chit chat you know for the sake of it it's like you're in there to do a job aren't you yeah yeah yeah. I thought one of my favorite tactics that I use is uh, wearing these headphones and not having any music on, just having the noise cancelling on so that like I can't hear people and they think that I'm, you know, mm-hmm. locked in. I, d- I, I do think like when you do, you know, fitness as a job, like Dom, you're a PT, aren't you? Yeah. When you do it as a job, you need to, you need to have like your time to yourself like while she's still training. So I, I do I do get it. Um, I suppose like maybe one more question from me. What is the plans for you on like a business front? Because I know you, we've spoke about it in the past and you're not massively in the the online coaching game. Like are you wanting to to tap into that a little bit more now that that prep's done? Yeah, I would like to. Um, I don't think I'm really wanting to take on like competitive clients um so i I think i still want to stay more in like the lifestyle um area and obviously with kaylee also doing online coaching um like we have some stuff ready to to launch of like us doing um a joint venture um so that that is in the works at some point um but yeah definitely like kind of boost my online presence um yeah like getting like lifestyle clients for sure yeah I think I think that that will be a very cool next step for you. Like I've, I'm Tom as well. We've spent a lot of time with you. I think if people like got to know the guy that we know, you like they can't help. They won't be able to. They'll be able to resist you, mate. They're going to be like, oh, this guy's got such a beautiful voice. He's got such a nice aura. Take my money. <laughs> yeah, literally. I feel like it's Get just. Me in uh, shape. It's, just a, it's just a case of like. Um, <clears throat> It's like on the PT on the PT floor, for instance. Like you can chat to people, people get to know you as you, and like obviously, no doubt, like people want to work with you. So it's like it's just replicating that online now, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think now I've got the time to do it. Um, I'm gonna like put more of my, my focus and my energy into it. Then uh, yeah, I can make it happen. So yeah, things. Yeah. Well. Good I'm man. excited to see it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Well, Dom. Tell the people where they can find you. We'll wrap the podcast here because I think it's been a very, very good one today. Um, so just on Instagram, at underscore Dom Kirby. Beautiful. Lovely stuff. We'll leave his links down below. That's it then, Josh. Should we should we outro? Do you, you can outro this one, one. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on. No pressure at all. All right. Um, three, <sighs> come on. Two, <sighs> one. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Board Short and Banter Podcast. We've had Dom Kirby on to talk about his bodybuilding. He went to Dubai. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, you get the gist. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. Me and Tom are making some massive changes to the podcast. Um, but you're going to just see that. We're not going to talk about it. Love you all lots. See you next week. Stay Bye-bye. Blessed.